Hi, and welcome to Milk and Honey Heritage Farms, and I'm Heather, and thank you so much for being here. So today, we're going to be doing Jam It Up June, a collaboration put on by Kettle Kitchen and Blue Self Reliance. And also sponsoring this collaboration is Four Jars Canning Lids, and thank you so much for doing that, Four Jars. So, um, this is a collaboration for the whole month of June of everybody's take on making jams and or jellies. So today I would like you to join me in doing that. Also on, let me read this from my notes, on Friday, July 5th, write that down on your calendar at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, or 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on July 5th, that's a Friday, it's going to be a live giveaway. So for all the collaborators joining this Jam It Up June for the whole month of June, um, each day there will be at least one, sometimes two um, channels that will be doing this collaboration. So I encourage you to go to their channels and make a wonderful comment, hit that thumbs up, like, share, subscribe if you can. Um, and I hope that you do that with this um, video as well. And in the live giveaway, there's going to be hashtags and comment pickers and collaborator prizes. So make sure you make those comments and um, enjoy the fun. Hopefully you learn something new, see something um, that you haven't seen before or inspire you to make some of your own. So um, let's get busy and see what I'm doing for my Jam It Up June in this collaboration. All right, so today in my Jam It Up June, I'm going to be using the Ball Blue Book Preserving Guide canning guide and my recipe today is going to be um, making elderberry jam so I'm going to follow the instructions from this book so that um, I make it according to how it says that I should do it so that way hopefully I remember what page it is on I do here we go so that way um, I don't show anybody the wrong way on how to make this elderberry jam. So, I wanted to give you guys a helpful tip. <clears throat> when you um, harvest elderberries, um, picking off the bigger stems before you freeze them, throwing them in a paper sack and freeze them because sometimes it's hard to get all the little stems off of them. So, get the big stems off, freeze them in the freezer, and then um, I just put them in a paper bag and then freeze them. And then what I did is I got a strainer. The strainer has long slits in it. See how it has long slits? So what I did is I put the frozen elderberries inside the strainer in the sink and I swirl it around and swirl it around and it helps get those little bits of um, leftover um, twigs. And you'll wanna do that with your elderberries. Okay, so next, <clears throat> what I have done is I have um, used, can you see it? Oh, here we go. I used a scale and I measured it out and it says that I have to have four pounds of elderberries. So I went ahead and pre-measured my elderberries and we're gonna go ahead and put them into a kettle or a pot. Make sure we get them all in there. Don't want to miss any out. Meanwhile, while you're preparing your jam, you will want to have pre-washed with hot soapy water and sitting in some warm water until you're ready to use your jars. Um, whatever size of jars you're going to be using to make your um, jam. And um, I've rinsed my lids and um, my rings. 
and the lids are sitting in warm water just to keep them from, you know, just to keep them there for when I'm ready to can it up or jar it up. So next it says that I need to add six cups of sugar, which is a lot of sugar, but you know what? We're gonna enjoy this recipe. So I've used this four cup measuring. I'm using a spatula to scrape out any remaining sugar bits that may be sticking on the sides of this measuring cup. Making sure that you get it in here because you wanna make sure that you are doing the recipe to how it's, uh, what it says. So there's four, there's one. So making five and another one making six. All right, and then it says that I need to add a fourth a cup of vinegar. When you use your vinegar, you wanna make sure that on the vinegar bottle, it says 5% acidity, which is very important when you're preserving foods. All right, so I've got that going and it says to um, turn my stove on and slowly heat it up as you're crushing the berries and the um, sugar will start melting into the berries. I know it doesn't look like anything, but that's what the recipe says. It will, once it starts um, warming up, the um, berries will start crushing or smashing down and the sugar will start um, blending into the elderberries. So that right now is a um, berry season for a lot of people. My um, strawberries and blueberries and raspberries are just about ready, maybe another week or two before I get to start harvesting some of the ones that I have. So it depends what area you're in. It's nice to kind of keep track of when berries are. So maybe if you don't grow them, you can go to farmer's markets or berry farms or whatnot maybe a friends or family that might have some berries. So what kind of things can we use jams and jellies for? Well, jams and jellies aren't just, you know, only good for peanut butter and jelly, right? You can use them for crepes, waffles, pancakes. You can use them for marinades on meats, like meatballs or chicken. Um, you can also use your jams and jellies to dehydrate and make um, like um, fruit roll-ups or things like that. There's all kinds of things. Um, you can use jams or jellies on your ice cream in your, in your yogurt or your granola. I mean, there's so many things. So this is just gonna take a little time and you need to be patient and you need to keep stirring it. And mashing it down. So I'll bring you back to when it gets more mashed down. You're just gonna keep stirring from the bottom and turning it up and mashing it down. Make sure you get that bottom flipped around so nothing gets burnt or stuck to the bottom of your, your um, kettle or pan that you're using, okay? Meanwhile, you wanna have um, some water heating up if you're going to be canning this. Um, once this is ready to be jarred up, you want your water in your water bath canner to be the same temperature as the jam or jelly that you're jarring up, so that way it won't crack your jars. So I'll bring you back when this gets to more of a point of getting ready to jar it up. All right, so I keep mashing it. You can use a potato masher in here to do this as well, or you can just break them up along the side and you keep making sure that you stir the bottom. Can you tell the difference? 
Now that's a lot of sugar, I know. I usually don't do a lot of sugar in my jams and jellies. I typically usually do a um, low sugar pectin type of thing, but this recipe doesn't ask for any pectin whatsoever. So anyways, you wanna heat it up until all the sugar is dissolved and as many berries as you can are smashed. You won't get every single one of them. That's perfectly fine because they're nice and heated. All right, <clears throat> so it says in the ball canning book to um, have it about 220 degrees. So we're gonna check that and I'm well over that, so. We are more than capable of being able to jar it up. So let's see, I'm gonna grab a ladle. ladle. And I'm choosing to do um, smaller jars because they're um, nice to give for gifts. Plus I don't have to use a whole bunch of them. I'm turning the burner off and then what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna start ladling the elderberry jam into my jars. And you'll wanna use a funnel so that you don't make as much of a mess. And then there's these little things that you can get at the store that have um, little measuring spots on it. And so when I'm doing this, the recipe says that I should do it um, a fourth of an inch headspace. So that would be this little marker right here and you set it on the edge of the jar and that's how high I wanna fill it. Each one of them. So, and then you just kind of ladle it in until you get that correct headspace and you can keep remeasuring if you need to keep remeasuring. You may have to get a smaller spoon to spoon out if you kind of went over, sometimes that happens, not a big deal. And I did that. And a lot of times I'll have a jar set aside so I can stick this in here and set this aside and we'll go over the process of how to do the lids. Now for Jam It Up June, um, in my description, I will have a, um, all the people who are participating in this collaboration so that you can go check out their channels and see what they're making. And then um, make sure that you show up to the live giveaway and have your chance at um, winning a prize. So if you make comments on all those channels that are making videos, that'll help your chances of winning something great maybe. So anyways, so this is my jam, elderberry jam, and I am going to be making um, elderberry jelly as well. So you asked me what's the difference between um, jam and jelly. Well, jam is thicker, like a thicker consistency that often has pieces of the fruit or berry, you know, that you're jamming up. So. In the jam, whoop, you'll make a mess, and that's quite all right because you will we'll be cleaning these off. Um, anyway, so sorry, <laughs> the um, jam has pieces of fruit in it, which can be large or small. It it's up to whoever's making it or what the recipe says. Jelly, on the other hand, is more of kind of like a tea. So you take the berries or um, edible flowers that you can then um, um, make into a tea. And what you do is you'd put the berries in a certain amount of water or the flower petals and you boil them for so long to make like a tea. And then you strain out all the bits and pieces so then the water is then just flavored with whatever it is that you're making a jelly out of. So that is another option. So this um, elderberry jam doesn't call for any pectin whatsoever. 
So that's kind of nice, even though it does have quite a bit of sugar in it. But you know what? Every once in a while, it's nice to have a sweet treat. And you know, you can tone it down by using it as a marinade or um, whatnot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish um, jarring up the rest of this and then I'll take you to show you how I'm gonna water bath it. I'm gonna put it in my water bath. Remember I told you in my kettle, I have some water warming up that I'm gonna put my warm jars in. You wanna put warm jars in warm water when you're water bathing. You don't wanna put hot jars in cold water or you'll get craft jars. So, oh, let me take you along and show you. After I jar it up, I'll show you what we do before we put the lids on these. I'm getting ahead of myself, I apologize. You know, another quick thing that I should mention to you is when you are um, using your vinegar to wipe the edges of your lids down, you wanna go around them with your finger and make sure there's no chips on your jar, like chipped off glass pieces. We don't want that to happen because that can also lead to the, the lid not sealing, okay? Um, so there's that. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty simple, but just to make sure. And then also when you're using um, these lids, you wanna make sure that these are brand new lids, not used ones, okay? Because the seal might not seal, or it will seal, and it may not last as long as you would like them to last because they were used. So don't use used ones, use used ones. And the rings, these, these can be used, just rinse them off. That's fine, as long as they're not bent up, okay? All right, so I have the jars and a kettle with water with one inch of headspace above the tallest jar. And you want the water to come to a roil, roil, rolling, there we go, rolling boil before you start timing it. And it says, sorry, in the book, I need extra light over here. In the book, it says 15 minutes for my elevation. Also in the book, it'll tell you the different times for um, canning for your elevation. If you don't know what your elevation is, you can simply type in your search bar, um, what is my elevation and put your zip code and it'll tell you. So we're just waiting for this to come up to boil and I'll bring you back when it's in a full rolling boil. So I have the lid on my canner and it's at a full rolling boil. Let me get the flashlight here to show you. Full rolling boil, you're gonna set your timer for 15 minutes unless the timing is different for your elevation. Again, make sure you check that. So in 15 minutes, I'm gonna turn my burner off and let it rest for five minutes. All right, so after I have um, boiled my elderberry jam for 15 minutes, um, I pulled them, I let it rest in the kettle for five minutes before I pulled them out. Now I pulled them out and you can start hearing the lids make a little pinging sounds. Anyways, so we will let these sit on this towel um, for 24 hours. I'm gonna cover it up overnight. Um, tomorrow I'll take the rings off the tops because if you leave the rings on, it can form a false seal, meaning it won't be properly sealed and you wouldn't know it. Or um, it could get rust because moisture will get between the glass and the metal ring. So there you have it. There's my elderberry jam. And isn't that color beautiful? So now we're going to go to making my elderberry jelly. Thank you for hanging in with me. And I hope you're enjoying this video.